Okay, here's the situation. Basically, this American paratroop units want to um, close assault and, well, you know, eventually get past. They need to take out these Germans behind the hedge here. Um, it's not a, it's not a bocage. I don't want to get into that right now. But what we have here is we have um, a Hetzer to just normal, you know, um, German infantry units. This is their headquarters. And this is a machine gun that's still hidden. It's been concealed. It's not fired yet. And you are revealed once you get within 10 centimeters of them, of which no one is. These guys are close, um, but they're not. So basically the situation is, is it's the American, it's the American's turn, and I want to show you what initiative happened, how, what, how initiative works. And this is starting out, these all have four hits on them, and so, and they luckily did not get suppressed, the airborne um, deduct some die, a die when they roll for suppression, so that's cool. All of these fired on him. And that's why they are now revealed so everyone can see them. He fired on the tank and missed, so he's revealed. He's not revealed, and headquarters doesn't matter because you can't fire on the headquarters. Um, this over here is a recce unit. And um, let's see if you can focus in on him a little bit. Um, and he is approximately 14... 13 centimeters away from him. Sorry for the blur, but it's just the way it's going to be. Um, we have a weapon machine gun here, a mortar. Oops, sorry. A mortar there, and then three infantry units, the headquarters, a 57 millimeter anti tank gun, and just a Sherman 75 millimeter, and then another infantry unit that's been hit. With four hits. So that's the situation and we're going to cover initiative phase. So basically what happens is you have a scheduled, so any artillery or aircraft could come and do something and then the next thing is the initiative phase. The initiative of a phase allows you to, allows troops that are within their command radius. So paratroopers have a command radius of 25 centimeters. So he can easily command units, his units that are within 25 centimeters. Now if you go beyond that you get penalties but anyway, in the initiative phase, any units that these all can see, they can act on. They can move toward, move away, shoot, uh, unlimber and limber, and that's what I want to show you, kind of some things that you could do in this phase. So let's see it. So let's get started here. Basically the whole plan is in this turn, as I said, I want to move these guys up to close assault them. But, you know, I got these, all these units are fresh, and this guy's still hidden. So they would do a lot of damage to them if they tried to close assault. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, so since he's still hidden, one of the things that Recky can do, and this is an optional rule, but I think it's tremendous, and I think I don't know how you not use it, but basically what the Recky can do is he, he doesn't even have to be able to see this enemy. We're going to say this tree blocks line of sight, even though normally they don't. Usually, you have to have a, usually I put a force template in there. But all he has to do is be within... A certain range of them and then so what he's going to try to do is communicate and see this guy so basically it's it's a it's an abstraction they're parked here and their guys are out looking around and then they communicate with their nearest with a nearest headquarters in this case these guys here and they don't even have to see him it doesn't matter and it's close if there's an HQ over here they would have to communicate with this one but this is the only one on board, so they're going to communicate with this one. So what you do is you measure how far is that recce from that enemy. Again, they don't even have to see him. He's over 10 centimeters. So basically, it's a point per 10 centimeters. Okay. So right now, that, that first 10 centimeters would be one point, and because you're in that second one, it'd be two points. So basically, I need to roll a die, one die, and try to get higher or equal to that number. So I have to roll a 2 or higher to see if that recce unit successfully communicates and basically reveals that unit. So I roll a die and voila! A 4. Isn't that amazing? So now that's revealed. 
Now there's three things I can do with that successful communication. I can um, allow infantry guns, mortars, things like that to target that on the next turn. They can be given that command and target it. So he could be like far away and target it and not have direct line of sight or whatever. He could target it. Uh, you can call in an artillery attack or you can call in an air attack on them. Or you can add one to the command roll of this headquarters the next turn. And I'm going to do that. So I made these little markers here so I can remember what I did. And the reason I'll tell you, the reason I'll give you a reason why I'm doing that, because I'm going to have all these, a lot of these units doing initiative in this turn, and when you do that, basically I'd put one of these with by every guy, but you don't need to because most guys are going to do something in this command unit. It's cost one minus CV, so it takes one from your command value when you do initiative, and so I'm basically going to zero that out so that I still have my command initiative when the turn starts. All right, so that's that. That was the first successful thing to do on that. Now, the next thing I want to do, and the, the order you do things does matter in initiative, and I'll explain that in just a minute. But in this one, it doesn't really matter. So now these, all, these guys are revealed behind this hedge. That's considered linear terrain, an obstacle, and it's light cover for them. So this uh, machine gun, machine gun wants to fire on him and you know, try to suppress him. Because when you're close assaulting, you know, units can support them, but not if they're suppressed. So the, the browning here, let's find this line. And let's hit uh, focus on, on that. Uh, his an, anti-personnel is three dice at 60 centimeters. So if he's within 30 centimeters of that, he can add another die. Well, he is, as you can see, he's within like 14 or so. So he rolls four die. He rolls and he gets a four, a three, a three, and a five. Now he hits, because he's in cover, he hits on a five plus, so he gets one hit. So now when you get hit, this, he doesn't get a save because he's not in cover. Okay, so he takes a hit. Okay, so he's going to get one hit. He does not get a saving roll because he's not in any sort of cover that gets a saving roll. Now, whenever you take a hit, you then, so he took one hit, so now he normally would roll one die to see if he's suppressed. And you're suppressed when you roll the number, the to hit number. So in this case, it was a five to hit, so if he rolls a five or six, he's suppressed. Now, as the American, I'm looking for suppression. But remember, we read on the chart that he's green, so he has to roll an extra die to see if he suppresses. So I roll my two die. Oh my goodness, look at that, a three and a six. So he does suppress. Now, I have created, and I know a lot of people hate these markers, but for me it's just easier, especially when you're teaching new people. And for me, remembering, I just got to say it. I put a suppression marker on him, so now he's suppressed, and that means he can't move or fire. And if he's hit again, it does something else. All right, so that's that. Okay, the next thing I want to do is I want to continue suppressing the line. So he doesn't have to, this mortar here doesn't have to fire on that machine gun because he's suppressed but now he wants to try to suppress one of these one of these units here but he can't see him because all these people are blocking him so what I need to do now is give this for two reasons I want to give this infantry unit a move order because he's one he can see this unit so he can do something now you don't want to move him too much close to that he's only got two more hits left and he's destroyed so what I think I want to do and that would cost towards my break point I want to move him back to some safety. So I can move him up to his move unit, which is 10, and I want to move him out of the way of this uh, mortar, out of line of sight, because he does block line of sight and line of fire. Um, but anyway, you know, actually for a mortar, I don't know if he blocks line of fire because he could fire over him, but I'm not going to get into that right now. But he does definitely block line of sight for direct fire for that mortar. So I would get him and say, okay, where can he move? Oh, here's some woods. Again, normally I have a template, but I didn't want to mess with that. So he's within 10. So I would just move these guys back into the cover of woods. Now woods is an obstacle and dense. Let me make sure I got that correct. Just a minute. Uh, yes, orchard woods. And so, yeah, that's um, considered dense. Let me show you this chart here real quick. Um, this is available for download, so I don't mind showing you that. High area terrain for foot is an obstacle. 
So basically what that means for an obstacle is they have to stop when they get there. They have to stop on the edge, but they are allowed to move in to take advantage of that cover. So they'd get to cover those woods the next time. So now, if you see it, the mortar now has line of sight to these guys behind the hedge. So let's fire that mortar. Okay, the mortar has got a move of 10, so anti-personnel, 3 at 120. You can fire 120 centimeters. The um, mortars do not get to add a die for being half. Also, uh, an 81 millimeter mortar, which I think would be considered heavy. I'm not quite sure of that, but I'm going to consider it a heavy. They have to. They cannot. They have a minimum range. They have to be within um, further than 20 centimeters away. And I'll have to look into that. But mediums have to have a minimum range of 10 centimeters, and medium large mortars have to be have a minimum of 20. But he is further than he is at. I put him right at 20. Sorry, you couldn't see that. So let's roll. Oh, and look at that. Whoops. Let me cover up that roll. <clears throat> look at that. He hits on fives, the same. He hit rolled one five. Again, I rolled the dice to see. So now I have to roll one die to see if he suppresses, but they're green, remember? So they roll two. Oh, and look, he got a six, so he's suppressing. Boy, it's just going the American's way. I would put uh, a suppression marker there, and I would put a mark that they have one hit. So that's that. Now let's go to the next one. I'm going to want to close assault these guys. I still want to try to continue. I have two more units I need to suppress. Um, so, But I'm going to hope that I can do that in the next turn. So basically all these guys are going to move up. They can move up 10. I might as well move them up as close as I can. But they cannot move within 5 unless close assaulting. So I can't move them up there. So I can move them up. I could move them there at 14. I could move them all the way up to here, but I can't because they can't move within five. So I'll just move them up to here. So he moves here. Now the thing about initiative, the Germans can't fire during initiative, and that's pretty huge. Okay, so they're all within there. All right, so that's their initiative move. Now another thing you can do in initiative, because what I'm going to try to do, and let me move these guys over here so I can actually have a target here. You can also unlimber. You can see my 57 millimeter gun, uh, which the stat line that I have right now shows that it can't shoot personnel, but there's also a, stat, a different 57 millimeter gun that can, so we're going to use that one, but I just don't have it handy. So these guys are going to unlimber, and basically I just move this over. Now normally, that, the reason I'm doing it now in initiative, because you know if I could give them the command to do it, but if I did that, he could get fired upon, and so now his goal will be to suppress that unit before these guys close assault. And I could use this guy's machine gun to fire on if I wanted to. All right, and lastly, we gotta we gotta need to suppress that Hetzer because that guy could help support that against that close assault. And I want to get a flank shot. So this Sherman over here can move twenty. And right now he doesn't have a flank shot, and, and the guy's got the advantage of that hedge. So let's move him, and the Hetzer's also got a limited um, shooting radius. So he, we could move this guy over here like this and turn him, and now he's got a great flank shot on that Hetzer in the next turn. To this guy. Okay. All right, we'll see you at the next turn. All right, now let's. we're at the turn where we want to try to close assault. This is going to be a little challenging. I don't do close assaults a lot. I haven't played that many games, but I'm going to try to get it right here. But let's do the other things first to try to keep this going. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we need to roll and see if this commander here, everyone is within 25 centimeters of him, so I don't have to worry about any sort of... Um, actually, you know what? He's not... <laughs> Uh, I didn't find this. So that tank is more than 25 centimeters away from this HQ. This HQ, whoops, this HQ has a command value of 9. 
that means he on a die he has to roll a nine or less to command. Now remember, we did initiative, so that's normally one minus that command, so normally it'd be an eight. But remember, we did the recce, and so he adds one. So just that negates those negatives and that positive. Just as a note, the recce unit can't do anything because he since he did that communication, he can't do anything this turn, so he's kind of out of the picture. So that's that. His command value is 9. Although that tank is now out of that command radius of 25, so for every 25 o over that, it's a minus 1. So he's, you know, within like 30, so it's minus 1 to that. So it's now 9 minus 1. I roll the, roll the command and got a 7, so he's fine. So the first thing I want to do is fire this machine gun again, back at that machine gun, just to keep whittling him down a bit. And I rolled, uh, remember he gets to roll four dice, because he has three dice normally, but he's within half. I actually rolled these this time, I didn't just make it up, I rolled them. He got one hit, because remember he hits on five ups. Because he's green, he has to now roll two dice for suppression, or what we call fallback. Now the reason we're going to do for fallback instead of suppression is because remember he's already suppressed from the first from the initiative okay so we rolled the two dice and I actually rolled these and I got two fives so remember I, all I need to do is well since he's already suppressed I don't have to hit on a five it's just whatever I roll on the two dice because he needed to roll two because he got one hit he's green he has to roll now two dice if he had had four hits, he would have had to roll five dice for fallback. So what fallback happens is you roll the two dice, in this case, two dice, and I got ten. Which for him is good and bad. He is, if I would have rolled eleven, I would have knocked him out and he would have been out of the game. But, because when someone's already suppressed, so he moves back ten. He now moves out of the crops. Whoa, I'm just earthquake. He's still suppressed. And now he has three hits. All right, so that happened there. All right, now I want my, uh, my 57 millimeter. He gets uh, three die. Oops, excuse me. He gets three die. But because he's within half... He's going to try to suppress these guys. They need to suppress them before they close to salt. So I get to roll four die. He normally gets three. He's within half. He gets to roll four. I actually rolled these, and I got one hit. Remember, he hits on a five up. I then rolled for suppression, and I rolled a one. So he takes a hit, but he is not... Um... He's not suppressed, so that's good for the Germans. You know what everyone likes to do in firing armor? This Sherman wants to fire on the Hetzer. Okay. You can see, when I focus, he gets to fire a flank shot, so that adds a die. He's within half his range, that's another die. And he normally gets to fire three anti-tank die. So he gets to roll five dice. I rolled. I rolled a one, a one, a five, a five, and a five. So very good rolling. I, I gave the Hetzer a little bit of cover, or made it harder to hit because he's in the crops. Um, I don't know, that's just how I ruled that. The Hetzer on the stat line, we can look here real quick. The Hetzer has a save value of 4, so he saves them 4 ups. So I rolled that, so he saved on 1. So now he's going to take 2 hits. So I just put a little marker over here somewhere if I can make it fit. Put the Hetzer way back. But now I still need to roll for suppression. Remember, he hit on fives, so if I roll a five or up on these two 
hit dice, then he's suppressed. And look at that, I did it. So now he is suppressed. I did it, yeah. I rolled those dice well. Anyway, all right, so that would be that. All right, close assault. I do not have these rules down 100%, so I'm, but I'm just going to go for it how I would play it, and I hope the Blitzkrieg Commander guys can come on and either give me video responses or responses in the comments. Oh, I guess I should do like they say, give me a comment below. Anyway, sorry. Someone, I, one of the guys I watched said that. He, he hates it when people do that. And someone says, give me a hooba juba duba on the thing below I I don't know what. Anyway, sorry. Sidetrack. So... I'm going to close the salt. Uh, normally, oh, you know, when I rolled my command roll, that was a, something I didn't talk about. So he had a command vector. Did I talk about that or not? Anyway, oh, yeah. Remember that guy was further away? So that actually made the command roll from a 9 down to an 8. I should have said because these guys were going to close assault, because you give everyone their commands. You say, okay, this guy's going to fire, you know, this guy's going to fire, these guys, no one, no one was moving. Well, I could have fired with these guys, too. Oh, well. Um, these guys are going to close assault. That's another minus one. Oh, wait a minute. Let's look here real quick. Remember, on American Airborne... No command penalty. I'm sorry. That's good. Anyway, normally you get a command penalty of minus one to close assault, but they're airborne, they're tough, they don't care about that, so they don't get that assault. So basically, because this guy's suppressed, I'm going to send one guy up there, and because this guy's not, I'm going to send two guys up there. Now, if any unit is within 10 centimeters, they can support this of the assault. No Americans are within 10. The Germans are, but they're suppressed. Sorry. Germans are, but they're suppressed, so they can't really do much about it. And they can also fire on them and support it, but they can't. So my first thought, before I recheck the rules, I was going to have both these guys close assault him. He can't really do that, because he, he has to, that hedge stops you from crossing that terrain, and the only way you are actually assaulting them is if you're base-to-base -base contact, center on center. All right, so basically... I would move him up. And as I started to move him up, these guys are like, forget that, we're going to fire. All right? So then let's go check their stats out. Their conscripts, sorry for the glare, 3 at 30, so they roll 4. And let's see what happens. I'll just roll it live. They're in the open. They get 2 hits. Let's see if they suppress 4, 5, or 6. Oh, and I actually get to a minus one die for that, but they didn't get hit. So they have two hits going into that. Okay. So he can continue going up there. So he gets right up to the hedge. Now, if they are if they were right in contact with the hedge like they are, they can go ahead and go into the attack on there. If they are right behind it, they would have to move up to there and wait for another command roll. Okay. So they're there. Now let's move the other guys up and support. Okay, close assault. Here we go. So what's going to happen is the conscripts can come over here. Oh, nice. Okay. Close assault is three. Okay. So they get to roll three die. There's no modifications for them. If you look on the uh, close assault sheet... No, they're not assaulting the enemy. All right, so then let's go look at the Americans. Infantry unit, close assault five. So they get to roll five dice, but if you look here, each unit assaulting, he gets to roll now six die. Each unit in support within 10 centimeters in line of sight. That's A. I declared he was supporting that one since they weren't suppressed. So they get to add another die, so that's seven die. Not, no, and no, and no. The Germans rolled, the Germans are going to hit the Americans on a four, five, or six because the assaulting one always gets hit more even if they're in full cover because they're assaulting, it's like because you can see them coming. So they hit on a four, five, or six. 
They had two hits. The Americans rolled seven die and got three hits because they're hitting on a five. Because again, they had the cover, the hedge, and the, the crops. So then you come over here to this chart. You get more hits, the loser retreats, the winner consolidates. All right, so remember the the uh, Germans took. Oh, I should have done this before I turned it on. But anyway, the Germans take um, take uh, three more hits, and now they have a total of four. They become suppressed, and they move half their move back. So that's there. Sorry, getting you dizzy. They're suppressed. They could consolidate. I mean, they could take that area, but there's visible enemy, and so they can't. So they'll stay right there. The Americans take two more hits, but they are not suppressed. Okay, now let's roll this close to salt. Here we go. These uh, second, uh, second squad A company, or second squad A platoon, whatever you want to look at this, this unit cannot support or do anything because he already supported this. So these guys would move up here. No one can react. He has no one that can respond to him. If there was units here that weren't suppressed, they could respond to him if they're within 10. It's pretty, really hard to, to assault. I made this a very easy assault. Um, so now these guys are conscripts. They get three dice against them. They hit on a four, five, or six. These guys get five dice to close assault plus one because they are assaulting but they do not get that other plus one because they do not have any support okay so let's look at what the die rolls were this was the German die roll he hits on a four five or six he got one hit the American hits on five or six he got two hits okay no saves nothing like that so then when you look at the chart sorry I try to go a little slower here he got one hit he got two so that's double or more hits the loser is knocked out and the winner consolidates again they can't because they see this enemy here and this enemy here so he would be knocked out golly and he would be out of the game of course that would go away and he could consolidate uh, and he he still takes his two hits though so you'd have to add that Okay, so real quick, I'm running out of space on my phone here. This is all, trying to do this all on my phone. Okay, so that was that command, um, they, that, that was that command for that uh, HQ. They could try to roll again. I usually use a D10 to mark off what my next command roll is, because he starts out with a 9, and then his next one will be 8, because you minus 1 for each command after that. So let's just do the command roll. I'm not going to do the whole turn because you saw pretty much everything that you need to know about moves. Close assaults, attacks, flank attacks, and all that. So his command is 8. Um, those two, two things there just negate each other. Remember, uh, he is more than 25 away, so he's going to cost another one. Now, if he were like 51 away, he would cost 2. Because for every 25 beyond the command radius. And I may have that wrong, but that's how I play it. Um, if I were going to see they're not close to assaulting, there would be no other command penalties. So now I have to roll a 7 because it's an 8 and then minus 1 for that. So it's a 7. So I'd roll 2 die and get a 3, which would be great. So I could do stuff again. I could, But before I roll that command roll, I have to say, okay, he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna fire. Uh, this guy's going to close assault that Hetzer. He's going to close assault that... HQ probably he's gonna move up he, they're all everyone's gonna move up and the recce can I do anything with him or not I'd have to go back and look at that if I can do something with him in that second command I don't think I can uh, because he can only do that thing in the initiative so I just keep moving everybody up um, I'd probably yeah and I'd fire this guy at that guy so that's that Thanks. I hope this was uh, informative and uh, useful for how com um, Blitzkrieg Commander works. Thanks.